Good afternoon. Welcome to the Macquarie University webinar. My name is Matt Monkhouse, Director, Global Engagement and Business Development, Macquarie University. Firstly, congratulations on receiving an offer to study with us. It's a terrific accomplishment and we look forward to welcoming you here on campus. Uh, many of you may be in the process of making the final decision to study with us here in Sydney, Australia. So today we're going to chat with you about information on individual study areas, scholarship opportunities, how to apply for uh, credit for previous study and how to accept your offer. Okay, so with me here today, I'm delighted to introduce two international student representatives who will share with you their experience at Macquarie University. So welcoming the panel, we have next to be Ms. Uh, Kelly Wynn. Kelly is a current international student from the United States, and she's studying a Bachelor of Arts majoring in Linguistics. Uh, we also have Ms. Rita Doe. Rita is a Macquarie alumni from Vietnam. She graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in Marketing. But before we actually hear from our panel, and I uh, provide an overview of Macquarie University, we're actually going to first hear from one of our current international students, Hatem Qadar. He's from Pakistan, and he's going to give you a virtual campus tour, so we hope you enjoy. Hi everybody, my name is Hatem Qadir, and I'm an international student at Macquarie University. Uh, I'm from Pakistan, and today we're on campus. Um, we're gonna tell you a little bit about uh, what we have on campus and the services that we offer. Right now we're outside the library. Uh, the library is uh, one of the central locations on campus. It's quite busy for assessments and examinations, especially at this time of the year. Uh, it's very resourceful for students. It has over 1.8 billion books. Uh, it has uh, Wi-Fi and bookable study spaces. Um, people like to hang out here a lot of the times. Uh, we have uh, an interesting feature which is called the ASRS, which has consists of a few robots that can go in and manually fetch books for you. And um, it's in all a very good experience uh, being here with all the services and uh, Wi-Fi and online journal resources being offered to you. Uh, so coming over to the location of the university, this is uh, a map of Macquarie University's main campus. Uh, it's quite centrally located, the area around uh, the university is known as Macquarie Park. Uh, this area in specific, right around the university, is uh, called Macquarie Park. It's kind of um, a combination of not only the university but a lot of big software houses and technology uh, houses. Um, right around this side of the university, we have the Australian Hearing Hub, Cochlear, Microsoft, uh, Dell, Panasonic and many other big names in the corporate industry as well. Um, other than this, a few key locations on campus are the library, the Sport and Aquatic Centre and Macquarie Graduate School of Management. Uh, having said that, now let's move towards the student services. are outside the student services uh, right on this side um, I myself have used the student services along the course of my degree I once had academic difficulty while starting my degree and obviously uh, it's it is quite difficult for many students coming from a, a very different place a very different culture settling in and getting used to the academic uh, structure of the university and how assessments are done and how uh, wh what's expected and the learning outcomes of uh, all the things that you study here so the student services provide um, advice, solutions, and they take care of you no matter what problems you have, uh, whether it's financial problems, you need someone to talk to, you ha you're like having troubles adjusting socially, you feel a bit lost, um, you can't study, you can't focus, feeling kind of lonely, or you just need to talk to somebody, someone who's there for you, to stand by you, uh, student services does, th does that for you. And, uh, it's, it is very, very uh, commonly used and popular among students. So 
So um, here we are at Muse. Uh, this is the first place of contact that students have once they are new to Macquarie. Uh, it, this is also where you get your ID cards issued and even if you lose one, this is where you come back. Um, I'll show you inside just a bit. So right there at the back is Student Connect. All the services and the desks and help centers are right over there. Uh, like you can see on this sign, it helps with uh, general course information, future inquiries, uh, any problems that you have currently with your degree. Um, if you need have pro problems getting documentation or transcripts or even your online portals, learning or communication with the staff and admin of Macquarie, this is where you come to. Another very important uh, feature is the careers and employment service, which do assist and help you in getting placed uh, for internships or jobs in specific uh, organizations. So right behind me over here is the kind of casual place. Uh, this is where students it's a, it's a multi-purpose area where you can study, you can sit, you can chill, you can plug in electronics. It's uh, kind of uh, very, it has a very casual outlook, so many students prefer to sit here instead of spending time at the library where it's quite formal, I guess. So this in all was what I needed to share with you about Macquarie University. Uh, we have much more than this to offer and uh, I like it over here, so I think you should come too. Bye-bye. You could treat me right hey, oh, hey. Welcome back. I hope that gave you some perspective of the campus and um, you're able to get a feel for the size uh, and some of the, the benefits of studying at Macquarie. And uh, once you arrive to campus, you'll be able to, of course, explore some of the, uh, the buildings and um, some of the beautiful campus areas you saw there. And before we actually refer to the panel and, and talk a little bit more in detail about study in Sydney, Australia, um, I thought it might be timely to give a little bit more of an overview of Macquarie University. I think many of you are, of course, familiar um, but I thought I'd just uh, touch on some of the key points of studying at Macquarie University. And we've got some slides that I'll go through uh, for that. So I thought, first of all, studying in Australia. So I think um, obviously you've uh, all done your research and looked at uh, various uh, destinations for study. And I think, you know, as you would have found, and obviously applying to Macquarie University and uh, looking at Australia, that it is something we do very, very well here in Australia. We have all sorts of legislation and policies in place to make Australia a very favourable study destination. Some of those include streamlined visa processing, post-study work, which is fantastic. So basically studying um, a program that is two years or longer in duration is going to give you access to post-study work, meaning you can stay back for two years and uh, get work experience in Australia, uh, look at some, uh, to build your experience and knowledge, whether you decide to look at options to stay in Australia longer, return to your home country uh, with your new qualification, or of course, be able to travel anywhere in, in the world with a Macquarie University degree. Safety, lifestyle. Sydney is a uh, an amazing city. I'm Australian, of course, but reasonably new to Sydney, and I absolutely love living here. I can't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Um, again, just the lifestyle. Um, it's a very strong economy. Um, there's lots of opportunities here in Sydney. And then, of course, Australian education. Australian uh, institutions are very much renowned as quality universities uh, and rank very highly around the world. So with Australia, for a small country, or I should say a big country with small population, Australia does very, very well. Um, also in Australia, very high starting salaries and part-time work opportunities. So we'll talk a little bit to the panel as we as we go about part-time work opportunities um, and some of the detail around that. Yeah, you know, your uh, general starting salary, um, hours per week you're entitled to work, that sort of thing. And Sydney really is uh, the corporate and commercial centre of Australia. So choosing Sydney as your study destination is absolutely a fantastic choice. And then I should talk about the weather. So here we are. in uh, It's winter here, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere. So winter in Sydney, but we have a very mild winter. Um, we have absolutely beautiful temperatures all year round, true four seasons. Uh, so Sydney, in that sense, is a really lovely place to study. Mild winter and a lovely summer. So looking at the university in a bit more detail. So Macquarie is established in 1964, so we're just uh, over 50 years old. We have um, upwards of 3,000 uh, academic and professional staff, 40,000 students in total. Uh, around uh, 9,000 of those students are international and they're coming from around 140 different nationalities. So the campus itself, as you can imagine, incredibly diverse campus, uh, 
Sydney and Macquarie, incredibly multicultural. So it's a wonderful uh, area to study. Um, then alumni. Again, we have around 164,000 alumni graduating students across more than 140 countries. Um, many of our alumni, of course, to go on, have gone on to do many uh, wonderful things and working in very senior positions within senior companies around the world or, of course, starting their own companies. The university itself, our location, around 15 kilometre from the city centre. Um, and the campus we have here is amazing. I think you touched a little bit just on uh, the campus too from Hatham, uh, but once you get here, you'll actually see uh, just what an amazing campus it is. It's around 126 hectares, uh, so a very large open campus, uh, lots of grassed area, um, mixed with uh, a lot of new infrastructure. Uh, so a fantastic place to study. I should also mention that for those of you who are looking at um, Faculty of Business and Economics programs in postgraduate, we have uh, a city campus or a CBD, a central business district campus option as well. But that's gonna be for those who are looking at um, finance, management, accounting in the city in particular. So looking at rankings across the university, I mentioned um, some of the rankings in Australian universities ranking highly uh, in the world rankings. Macquarie, of course, is no difference. If you look at the rankings there, uh, and the rankings, of course, are many and varied. So this just touches on a few. Within the QS world rankings, Macquarie University, uh, 10 subjects ranked uh, top 100 globally. And the QS ranking overall, five QS stars, teaching employability, essentially across all uh, aspects within QS rankings. Within the ARWU, uh, top 2% in the world, top 10 in Australia. Financial Times 2017 ranking puts uh, MGSM, Macquarie Graduate School of Management's MBA in the number one position, top 50 in the world. Uh, Times Higher uh, 2016 puts Macquarie in the top 50 most international universities in the world. And Macquarie University were also a research intensive university. Uh, and for 100% of our research rated world standard or higher by the Australian government. Why does that matter for you? If you're looking at coursework programs, coming to study an undergraduate program or a postgraduate coursework program, it is still important and something to consider. Uh, our researchers are internationally recognised. They're all around the world, find new ways of doing things, making new discoveries, uh, publishing in journal, international journals, speaking in international conferences. Then they're in the classroom teaching you, teaching our students, whether they're undergraduate or postgraduate. So you have access to these internationally renowned academics. <clears throat> so. The, record, the rankings are quite broad, but looking at Macquarie's areas of excellence, as a fully comprehensive university, we are good across many, many areas. You see on the slide there, um, 10 subjects ranked in the top world 100, which is a fantastic achievement for the university. Across business, education, engineering, IT, environment, health, medical sciences, law, criminology, media, creative arts, science, Society, History, Languages, and of course, um, in the MGSM, MBA, and our Master of Management. So we are recognised across a range of key areas. One other really important aspect of the university that is very unique to Macquarie, and something I take advantage of myself as a staff member, is having our own subway and train station on campus. So Macquarie University is the only university in Australia to actually have a subway on campus. So we have an underground subway connected to the Sydney Rail Network, physically on Macquarie University campus. This is fantastic as it means you can actually live on campus and very easily get across Sydney. Or for myself, uh, who lives a close distance away from campus, I travel uh, by train to work each day. So it's very easy. It means no matter where you live in Sydney, you get access to the university or from the university access to across Sydney. And I think our next slide shows this quite well. Don't expect you to understand this yet, but you will get very familiar with this once you uh, arrive to Macquarie University. So this is basically a, a small um, a screenshot of the Sydney Rail Network. So you can see the red circle there where it says Martin Place. Um, that is a central, essentially the, the central business district. And that is really where you'll find Harbour Bridge Opera House. All those amazing um, pictures and iconic images that you're used to seeing. And you can see on the red line, uh, just up on a straight line, so no change, single line from city centre to Macquarie University is on the, uh, the north line is uh, Macquarie University. So we're about 30 minutes in total 
from the city centre. But the good news is there's actually some upgrades happening to the Sydney rail network. So what this means uh, is in future, uh, it will be in the very short term future, I should mention as well, with the upgrades currently taking place. Ultimately, there will be high speed driverless trains every four minutes taking you from Macquarie University to the city centre with, uh, once this is finished, it will be a travel time of around 15 minutes. So that's going to be an incredible upgrade um, to really be uh, fantastic for all that use the train network. Mm -hmm. Now, our location in itself uh, is actually very important. When you look at Sydney as a city, Macquarie University is actually quite central within uh, the greater Sydney area. So we're quite central within Sydney. Again, as I mentioned, about 15 kilometres to the city centre. On this particular slide, you see the campus in the foreground. Our location is very advantageous um, for the university and also looking at other universities around who can't compete with us on this space. We are located in the centre of not just Australia's largest high-tech park, but actually the Southern Hemisphere's largest high-tech business park. It's called Macquarie Park Innovation District. There's around 300 companies within this corporate park and it's very seamless to where the university starts and this tech park essentially stops and starts. So the university in the centre, we also have around 30 of these companies actually on Macquarie University grounds. This is important for you because what it means is um, the university interacts with these organisations on a very high level. So it means internships, and I'll talk to the panel a little bit about this as we develop as well. Uh, internships, graduate positions, but then also uh, research development, commercialisation of research that we're doing with these organisations. So we interact with them on a, on a very high level. So that's really important for you as a student to take advantage of the location and how you may be able to interact with these organisations. And the next slide here shows just a, a snapshot of some of the organisations that are in uh, the Macquarie Park Innovation District. And um, of course, there's many opportunities for internships there, as I mentioned. And um, we have uh, one of our students there um, who's basically Macquarie University alum who got a graduate position with Microsoft, again, who is in the tech park. So with that, um, really covers, I guess, a, a quick snapshot of Macquarie University. So then I think from here, I'd like to hear from the panel a little bit, but we want to open it up for questions first. Uh, so I thought this is a great opportunity for you. Uh, you have your offers, you're looking to come and study at Macquarie University. I'm sure you must have lots of questions. Um, but before, uh, while you're typing up your question, I might just ask the panel to introduce themselves, a little bit about what they're studying and um, their experience at Macquarie and also living in Sydney, Australia. Rita, can I start with yourself? Of course. So my name is Rita. I was originally from Vietnam and I'm, I, I did this Bachelor of Commerce with a major in marketing at Macquarie University. I finished in late 2017 and my Macquarie degree was three years and throughout those three years I had probably the most amazing time of my life at Macquarie. With, with my Macquarie degree, it was just much more beyond the classroom. Like the classroom was perfect. All the teachers were very approachable. I still remember my first year economics lecturer and my first year stat lecturer who went above and beyond to help me succeed in my assignments and my exams. And it just went beyond the classroom because when I was at Macquarie during my studies, I completed two internships and two exchanges during my degree, which is within three years. Um, I, in I interned through what Matt talked about before the, uh, at the Newsen company. Newsen was the largest market, uh, market research firm in the world. And Macquarie University helped me source that internship and put me in that internship. It, that gave me great work experience while I was studying and it was a great way for me to apply my learnings into real world, um, into the real world industry. I had an exchange at, in Germany and Korea and those two exchanges really helped me um, travel and really meet people from all around the world. Wonderful. It sounds like you really took advantage of a lot of those mm -hmm. the internships and as we were discussing, I guess, our, um, our location with the tech park and that yes. was able to assist you. Yes, and that came in really handy. Fantastic. Yeah. Kelly, what about yourself? So yeah. I should mention Rita's now alumni and finished with us. Well, Kelly is actually still studying. So. Yes, so I'm in my last year here at Macquarie. So I'm doing the Bachelor of Arts in Linguistics, as you said. Um, and I'm actually really happy with the on-campus life here at Macquarie. So I'm involved in a couple of different societies. So um, one that's a professional society, so for the speech, hearing, and linguistics, um, which really helps you make connections and work with your peers and your classes and things like that. Um, and then also I'm involved in sports here um, at Macquarie as well. So I'm very happy with that on-campus life. Um, and I do enjoy living on campus as well. I find it's very convenient. 
um, and it's helped me make a lot of friends. Fantastic. Yeah. And I guess you just touched on accommodation, which we've got some mm. questions coming through, and I guess that really yeah. also touches on our first question. So would you like to talk about, I guess, um, I guess your own experience with accommodation? Mm. You touched a little bit about living on campus. Mm. Really, can we hear from you as well? But also then, I guess you can talk a bit more broadly about some of the options, what maybe some of your friends may have done, or mm. I guess some of the, the other options besides living on campus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I live at one of our residential colleges here at Macquarie. So um, it's actually fully catered. So you get three meals a day. Um, and there's definitely peer support and support from the staff at the college. Um, there's a couple of other residential college options. Um, the other options on campus are the Macquarie University Village. Um, I know a lot of people who live there, so it's basically you share kind of a house with um, a few other people, but you have your own room and bathroom. Um, so you just share common spaces, but that's also a great way to make friends, social aspects and things like that. So you're enjoying on-campus life? Yeah, I've been yeah. there for two years, so it's Fantastic. really great. Yeah, and it's a great opportunity to take on additional leadership roles as well. Okay. And Rita, sorry, before, did you live on campus, Rita? I lived in the village that Kelly mentioned for about six months as out of my degree, but I actually moved off campus for the, my degree, for the, the marriage of my degree. And people usually think that Sydney is quite expensive from overseas, but actually quite affordable mm -hmm. around the Macquarie Park area. So that was going to be my next question was about price, so great to <laughs> touch on that as well. So I lived off campus for about two and a half years in my degree and I paid under $200 for a single room for, for um, just about 10 minute bus ride away from campus. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of those off-campus accommodation options around Macquarie University as well. It's a very good area to live because you have a shopping center just nearby. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of grocery shopping mm -hmm. options. You have a, a movie theater. You have an ice rink. <laughs> what else can you ask for? Yeah, laser bowling tag. alley, laser tag. <laughs> what else can you need? We need eat in your life as a student. It's true. We should, I guess, just mention while you talk about that is we do have the largest <laughs> shopping center, Macquarie Center in Sydney me just across adjacent to the university so not only is it a great place to hang out <laughs> restaurants but many of our students will work there yeah. as well yes. great opportunity though. and i guess there's really three different options and uh, you would know much more about this than me but i guess um there's three different options that we can touch mm. on for accommodation one is living on campus yes um the other is essentially um share accommodation so yep. moving in with either friends or uh basically renting a room as you mentioned share share apartment and the other is a homestay Yep. Homestay. So they're really the three options. And our accommodation office, so we have a dedicated accommodation office here at Macquarie University that will assist you getting accommodation in any of those uh, types of accommodation. Mm -hmm. um, and they do vary in price and range. Um, but I think accommodation in particular, in my experience talking to prospective students, can be something that uh, is, is always a concern and is always one of the questions you get. And, and understandably, when you're coming to a new city and a new country, mm -hmm. um, can be uh, to be apprehensive about that. Was your experience it was quite easy in gaining or getting accommodation, suitable accommodation? I would say not to worry and get in early because the accommodation office at Macquarie really helped me out when I first started. They were really super helpful, had all resources handy, both online, <coughs> offline, also in an in person office as well. And also because Macquarie University has its own little suburb around this whole area. So a lot of Macquarie University live around this area, there's all options going around as well. So don't worry. And also, it's such a safe area. There's no mm -hmm. crime here. Public transport runs almost until midnight or even late into, into the early morning. So it's super easy to live here and seem to feel super mm -hmm. safe walking around and do whatever you want. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. And your experience as well. And the average cost for accommodation? I see a question coming in around cost. What yeah. did you say? Maybe one fifty, one one hundred and fifty dollars per week, up into two hundred dollars per week for a private room. In my experience, mm -hmm. but then on campus housing might be a on campus housing is probably a bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, you're probably looking at maybe two hundred to maybe five hundred dollars yep. a week, depending mm -hmm. on which. It's on the services yeah, that you basically ask for. Yeah, which you get mm -hmm. and things like that. Because essentially, you can have washing, mm -hmm. um, food, you can have yeah. everything provided. So it really yeah. depends there. And you can walk to classes without even taking a bus or a train. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> as you mentioned earlier, you can basically wake up in the morning, roll out of bed, and you're in class. In class. Exactly. Easy. And I think one of my recommendations, too, particular for students looking um, undergraduate students, mm -hmm. is it's always nice uh, to at least do uh, one semester yes. uh, on campus. So if you can do one semester on campus, I think that's a great way to acclimatise yourself, culturally adjust, yes. um, get to know the lay of the land, mm -hmm. and then from there, you'll make friends, move out into other uh, accommodation. But... So some who obviously love it, you may stay there the whole degree. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Right? Absolutely. So I think that's wonderful. We might look at uh, some of the questions coming through. So we might look at those um, now. So 
So you're st still studying. So yeah. how does it work around? The, the, the question is mm. about creating a timetable and routine. Do you want to talk about, I guess, um, the general timetabling, choosing um, lectures, yeah. tutorials, and I guess how, much, how that works and your average, you know, what we may call contact time sure. on campus. Also maybe how much you're exposed to or you should <laughs> be planning to study around your, as well as contact yeah. time. Of course, it depends on whether you're doing an undergraduate or um, a postgraduate degree. Um, however, for most undergraduate courses, you'll have, um, you know, a couple hours of lecture a week, maybe two hours of lecture, and then one hour of tutorial a week. So mostly you get to choose what tutorial time you have. So your lectures are set. They'll happen once a week or twice a week. Um, and then you get to choose your tutorial time. So that's totally up to you. Um, They'll give you an option, say, maybe four or five options on a Wednesday or four options on a Friday, um, and you can choose from those. So you can set it up so you only come to class certain days a week, which mm -hmm. gives you plenty of time to, you know, undertake part-time work, internships, and the rest of your study. Yeah. Fantastic. Quite mm -hmm. flexible. Was that your experience mm -hmm. as well? Really, you're doing a, a business degree. It was your experience? Yes, definitely. And also, all the lectures were recorded online for me, so it was quite mm -hmm. handy for me to just, you know, study you know, from home or to sort of catch up on classes if I missed my classes that day. Mm -hmm. And everything was online. We had, we had our own study portal, we had our own assignment online. That was quite handy for me yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I think, look, that's my experience as well. As, as you said, you can generally uh, timetable. There's some flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Many of our students um, are able to, to adjust their particular their tutorial time. So it can fit around part-time work and that sort mm -hmm. of thing, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think um, sometimes uh, you may be required to be only on campus to depending on your program, 12 hours per week, mm -hmm. uh, which you may be able to put into two or three days physically on campus. Yeah. But of course, you may have 12 uh, contact hours per week, but you should generally recommend to, to study or allow around 10 hours per week per program, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you're doing a lot of your time at home in, in preparing for tutorials, working on assignments, mm -hmm. studying for exams, that sort of thing. So generally maybe a 40 hour week, but that 40 hours is of course very flexible. Yeah. Um, so the next one I can see coming through is a deadline for accepting an offer. So we have many students, mm. I'm guessing, uh, currently mm. participating in the webinar here who have offers. Mm. Some may be conditional, uh, some may be unconditional. So do you want to talk a little bit about um, how a student and the basically deadline for accepting offers? We we'll recommend you to accept your offer as soon as possible because you need mm. enough time to apply for your student visa, to make travel arrangement and to say goodbye to your friends and family back home. So our semester, the semester two starts in late July of this year, which means about six weeks away from as of today. Mm. So we recommend to, to accept the offer at least a month before the course start, which is late June. Um, to accept your offer, just simply follow the instructions on the offer letter that you got sent. Mm -hmm. If you have an, an unconditional offer, you, know, you can pay your commencement fee and also send back your acceptance form for scholarship and also the course offer. Mm -hmm. And after that, in about two or three working days, we can issue with a, an mm -hmm. enrollment comp, a COE, mm -hmm. and then you can actually use that to apply for your student visa. If you hold an, an, an a conditional offer, we have to meet the condition before you're getting a full offer. So we we'll recommend meeting the condition as soon as possible so you have enough time to get a full offer and then accept your offer afterwards as well. Mm. Yeah. I think that's good advice. I think um, communicating with um, Macquarie International is a big thing there as well. Mm. If you do need more information or what you may need to do, if you have a conditional offer and you need information about what you need to basically meet those conditions and you're not sure, please do contact us and we can provide some detailed information but I think the advice there of accepting as soon as possible is, is yeah. very good essentially there's no set deadline but you need to make sure that you're allowing enough time uh, to get your COE your confirmation of enrollment because your confirmation of enrollment basically which is provided once you pay your commencement fee is what you need to apply for your visa Mm -hmm. So once you get your confirmation of enrollment and you apply for a visa, depending on your nationality and your circumstance, uh, visa and where you lodge your visa to the Australian government, um, it can vary in time. So it's important that you get in that in as quick as possible. And you know we do hear variations between you know one to two days to three to four weeks, depending as I mentioned nationality and basically timing and how busy uh, the visa processing is. So I think good advice to get your visa mm -hmm. application in as soon as possible. And to do that, you need your ECOE, so your confirmation of enrolment. Um, so looking again, talking about, uh, I guess, internships a little bit as well. So as an international student, we'd like to ask for an internship. Are we paid for the internships? And what is the advantage of having an internship? That might be a good question, actually. We'll start with you, Sally. You did an internship or project within your degree doing... I'm actually doing one next semester. So um, 
for me, I'm going to be working with um, one of the lecturers on some of his research that he's done. Um, but generally, the internships are not paid um, as they're part of your curriculum. So it's something you do towards your degree. And the advantage of that is just getting the work experience and having connections with different people and businesses and things like that. Absolutely. I think great to have on your resume and build mm. that practical experience. Yeah. It's fantastic. And Rudy, so you spoke a little bit about your internship before. Uh, I did two internships during my degree at Macquarie University, and it was fantastic because Macquarie actually helped me find those internships. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go and find one on my own. And if you're doing an undergraduate degree, there is a compulsory internship component mm -hmm. or a compulsory practical work component during your degree. So within your last semester or your last year, your unit convener or your program convener will contact you to help you set up those work placement programs. If you're doing a postgraduate degree, there's also something similar as well in your programs. So it's quite handy during my degree. When I was doing my internship, I had option from Microsoft, Deloitte, you know, big companies like PwC, mm -hmm. um, and I could choose from any of those. And I picked news and news and market research because I was doing marketing and wanted to explore that area of my career path. And within an internship, it was a it was a thirteen week arrangement. The hours ranging from forty hours to about one hundred fifty hours. It can be either paid or unpaid. But it's a great experience to to, to build your CV from when you're only in, in, in university. And also a lot of my friends and myself as well had graduate offers mm. from those internships because company use internship as a great way to recruit full-time graduate roles after the student finished their university degrees. Absolutely, I think that's a really good point. And I think we see that quite commonly is, you know, the relationship we have with many of these organizations and part of them uh, putting on internships is that they're looking for good talent. So they're looking for people to come through and basically many of our students will turn internships into graduate positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think to answer the question, uh, graduate uh, internships are generally unpaid because they are part of your curriculum. Most will last a semester, but there can be some variation and some negotiation on how these may work. Uh, and um, again, it's a bit of negotiation whether uh, if you have an internship that you've sourced yourself that you'd like to do, there is some scope to do that, but otherwise the university will obviously very much assist you, uh, provide some, um, some alternatives basically for internship. Mm -hmm. So Shrey, we have a question from Shrey. The question is, how hard is it to manage the study workload along with part-time work? I think you both work part-time, so uh, I could probably have a answer that question well. <laughs> um, I think it takes a lot of commitment. Um, yeah. You definitely have to be committed to your studies and know that that's your first priority. Um, good time management. Yeah, good time management, you know, all of those important skills. Um, but it is possible. Um, you just have to be sure you're very careful about where you spend your time and um, things like that. I would say, I, again, not an international student, but I studied and uh, worked part-time. I'd mm. say it's definitely possible. And I would suggest mm. most of our students, mm. international and Australian students, domestic students, would work part-time while they study. Yeah. So it's definitely something that you'll mm. find is, is very common. common yeah. mm. Rita, you worked part-time while you studied? Definitely, as well. And also, I had so much support from my study um, classmates and also my lecturers as well, mm -hmm. because um, the teachers are very supportive here. So when I was working part-time when I was studying, I had constant check-ins from my tutors and my <coughs> lecturers and how are you going? Um, are, you in, you know, are you on track to submit this assignment on time? And so a lot of my units had a group work component in all of my classes as well. And a group work component helped me have study buddies in class who help keep me, you know, progressing on time and on track for my assignment. That was such a huge um, help as well for me. And I should say in my experience as well, I'm interested in your thoughts, many employers uh, who are looking for part-time um, employees really actually, uh, again, are looking for particularly students, but then also, as well as um, us being, took a look maybe about the minimum wages in Australia as well, but also as far as having, you know, good minimum wage, quite high. Um, I think most employers, in my experience, are flexible. They understand that students have university commitments, so they're able to be flexible around uh, students' working hours as well, I find. What about your, um, I think, maybe a good time to touch on the minimum wage uh, for, um, in Australia, we have all sorts of regulations and policy around minimum wage, so employers essentially have to basically adhere to a minimum wage, and it's quite a good minimum wage. What are your experience for yourself, or also perhaps friends, or uh, what you know about minimum wage and, and the uh, per hour um, pay for mm. part-time work. Yeah, it's quite a lot higher than 
most places I'd say. It's the US, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's around seventeen to yeah. eighteen dollars per hour as yeah. minimum wage for for students working yeah. part time in Australia. Not everyone is just general. Yeah. And usually, with my employer, they actually gave me time off for assignment for exam. It's really yeah. handy when you are working part time while studying as well. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's what I found. I was going to say, in my experience as well, I think 18 to 19 as minimum. But yes. then if you're working um, after hours, as in in the evening, or if you're working across the weekend, weekend yeah. you, you do get penalty sure. rates. Yes. So yes. it can be up to 25, 26, maybe even up to $30 yeah. an hour. Yeah. As well. yeah. Depends on, of course, where you're working. Yes. Um, many of our students will work in retail hospitality, and there's lots of opportunities mm -hmm. in retail hospitality. Yes. Um, but also uh, for, for postgraduate students, obviously trying to get uh, some work in your field of study is, is advantageous as well. And those opportunities are there, I must say. Okay, so looking at that one, um, a little bit about uh, international, I guess, international college and diploma entry. So this particular question is uh, focused around diploma of infor information technology. Uh, we can touch on that a little bit, but it might be good to also broadly discuss, I guess, about maybe the uh, diploma entry uh, into some mm -hmm. of our degrees. Yeah. That's a great option for students as well who are looking to get into the um, undergraduate degree, uh, especially since it does count towards the first year of your degree as well. So you're making progress even though you're not technically in your undergraduate degree when you first start there. Mm -hmm. And at international college, you get a lot of support from the teachers mm -hmm. and they have a smaller class sizes compared to the university first year environment. Mm -hmm. So having small class sizes, you have more attention from your teachers. You have a lot more support from university college staff as well, mm -hmm. which helps students who are in diplomas or foundation pathway programs have that extra support and extra boost to help them be ready for university study requirements. Sure, yeah. I agree, and I think it's fantastic because not only it actually accelerates your program, um, but that diploma is essentially all credited. So you finish your diploma and you move immediately into the second year of your bachelor. Mm. And I think Macquarie is a little bit different to some other um, universities or providers as well, where we have Macquarie University International College. It's 100% owned, operated by Macquarie University. It essentially sits uh, on the same standing as a faculty. So when you come into Macquarie University International College, you are a Macquarie University student from day one. Some other universities have pathway providers that uh, are third party providers or private organisations. But for Macquarie, uh, you are part of the university right from day one and our international college is right on the university. And in fact, we're actually sitting uh, just above it, right here. <laughs> yeah. where we are. So it is very much on university. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at that, we got one about uh, conditional offers, particularly uh, a question from Anmol uh, about receiving a conditional offer from Macquarie, uh, but is an IB student and results will only be published in July. So how long to accept offer for that? Um, we can actually issue offers based on mock IB results. I don't know if you have been in touch either with your agent or your admission officer. But if you have a mock IB result, please feel free to send the mock IB results over to the admission team and they can assess to see if you can actually accept without your actual IB results or you have to wait until your IB results come out. I think so. I think that's quite a specific question. I think yeah. basically with that, depending on your situation, there can be opportunities where we can accept predicted uh, scores. Um, so for I think for a question like that, please do contact us directly uh, and we can actually look into your uh, specific application and identify whether you may be eligible for um, us to be able to issue what's called uh, an offer uh, with conditions, yes. which means that you can accept early. And we can do that with certain qualifications. So we can look at your individual circumstance. Um, so next question we might look at there is again about um, international student, I'm afraid I will not have any friends. Is it easy to make friends? I'd like to think uh, us Australians are all very friendly, <laughs> uh, but as international students, two international students, I guess this might be a good one to talk a little about two questions here. I might pin this to two questions which we've had up. Is one is tell us a little bit about the cultural shock you may have had coming mm -hmm. to moving to Australia and to Sydney and from Vietnam, from USA. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about uh, culture shock or the cultural differences that you found in Australia. Mm -hmm. Then also maybe a little bit about just that, making friends and uh, I guess how you fit into the, mm -hmm. not only the university, but into Sydney and Australia. Yeah. Kelly, would you like to start? <laughs> sure. We're friends. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> yes, just be friends with Rita, it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, for me, I think the biggest difference coming from Tennessee would be the diversity here in Sydney, and especially on the Macquarie campus. Um, it wasn't so much a shock 
in a bad way, but just kind of a surprise and um, learning how to talk to people from all kinds of different places, I think was the biggest thing for me. Um, in terms of making friends, I think um, the best thing to do is to really get involved in the orientation week, which is the week before classes oh. begin. Mm -hmm. So you'll have an opportunity to um, sign up for societies and clubs um, and sport teams and things like that. So just getting really involved, um, even though it might be a little scary, uh, just to try and meet as many people as you can because you never know who you're going to really connect with. Agree. I think that's a really good point. I think orientation, for those of you who are about to accept their offer and, and, and come to Macquarie University and commence, definitely encourage you to uh, come to orientation. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. week. Not only are there a lot of social events, a lot of fun where you will make a lot of friends and meet a lot of new people, but there's also, I guess, a, a serious side of it with the adjustment and learning about the mm -hmm. academic structure, enrolling in subjects, um, yeah. actually doing your orientation. It's a very big <laughs> campus, 126 he hectare campus, so finding your way around campus. But then also important things like how to open bank account, you know, set yeah. up a, a mobile phone, get Wi-Fi, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Read all about yourself, cultural adjustment and making friends. Coming from Asia myself, I, I, I definitely had culture shock when I first came here, mm -hmm. um, but I realised that Australians become very friendly and welcoming over the past few years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. All of my friends that I first had in my first year are still my friends now. People really understood that there are differences from overseas and they warmly welcome and embrace it. They mm -hmm. asked about my cultural traditions or my cultural food or my cultural costumes and they were very open about learning about all of the differences from students from international backgrounds. Um, definitely, you know, go to orientation, um, make friends. Um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and people will warmly take what you give them. And also make sure that you um, use the support services on campus as well. When I first came here, I was part of the buddy program where the university assigned um, senior students who are buddies to new international students. And those buddies really introduced me to the campus and they're still my friends now and even the platform taking me around they also list, they were there to listen to my stories um, when I was homesick they were there to help me when I was sick they were there to take food to my house and those are things that I don't think I would have received somewhere else overseas mm -hmm. and that culture of being really friendly and open and really helpful was something that really Surprising about Sydney, but it was really worth it to come here and put myself out there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think you're talking about uh, multiculturalism and Sydney and the university is definitely incredibly multicultural. As I mentioned at the start, we have around 140 nationalities represented mm -hmm. on campus. So not only Macquarie, but also uh, in Sydney itself. Mm -hmm. um, what about, thinking about that, the, the, the cultural differences, what about for both of you with study? And I guess the angle I'm looking at here is being an international student coming in, uh, being asked to write assignments, adjust to the Australian way of study. Yeah. Um, I guess, first of all, was there many differences here in um, the way of teaching, but also how to write structure assignments, assessments. And also with that, I'm sure there was differences. Was there support available for you to, I guess, cope with those differences? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think in my first semester, it was definitely a shock. Um, not only just you know, coming overseas, but also just starting university. Yeah. Um, so that's huge, um, a huge change to make. But in terms of support systems, um, definitely the lectures and tutors are very helpful. So if you go to them, they can help you like look at the structure of your assignments or prepare for exams and things like that. But also, um, if you go to the library, they have resources there to help you find references or learn how to reference your essay in general and things like that. And so, Rita, before you start, I think this actually ties into a question that's come up as well from Nadia about an international student enrolling in an international business major, uh, and Nadia is worried about uh, some courses like accountancy. So, uh, I can actually have a story for you as well on that, Nadia, <laughs> um, in accountancy and industry. But what about yourself? So, I guess that ties into some of the support that's available. Did you also find coming in that you had support? Um, an adjustment into uh, new ways of teaching and new ways of doing assignments, that sort of thing? Definitely. So, Nadia, when I came to Macquarie, I'd never learned business before, period. I never <laughs> learned what marketing or economics was, and I hated anything that related to marketing and, what, and that's not what I majored in. And, I, <laughs> and so, when you come to Macquarie, you're not expected to know everything. That's why you come to university. You come to university to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so, don't work. Don't be worried, no one knows everything. The support that I received from my tutor and my lecturer was fantastic. When I was in my first year, I actually met with my lecturer one-on-one -on -one for about an hour 
every two weeks just to answer my personal individual questions about my personal difficulties in class. And this support is available for all students in all classes. And their lectures are very open to all of that. On a bigger scale, um, I was a part of something called a peer assisted learning program where I had senior year students who actually came back to teach first year students on how to do assignments in, in, in the same units. So little so support programs like that really helped me um, go through all of my assignments and my exams um, with, with, good, with, with very good results. And that was definitely what happened. And also in Australia, coming from Asia, I was taught to, you know, never ask questions um, listen to whatever they say, you know, the teacher's word is God's word, that, that's the, the exact right way. But when I came here, all the, it's a different way of learning and I was encouraged to ask questions, to challenge ideas and to think of new ideas. That was my biggest culture shock when it comes to learning in Australia. And I was like, oh my God, can I ask questions? Is that, is that like a thing here? And that was actually a thing here. And learning like that really helped me to take the knowledge in my own way and to, and to pass subjects and do my assignments with my own ideas. And that's how I learned. That's how I learned. That was the best way to learn for me. And I think that's probably my experience as well. And I think before I tell you about my story, I think the same where, you know, what we do find here and what I found as a student, but something our international students always comment on is the access to the academics. Yes. So mm -hmm. the academics here generally you call them by their first name. Uh, they will have an open door policy. So if there is a particular concept, problem, subject that you're having difficulty with uh, that, you're unable to solve through the extra tutorial support, the tutorial, some of the extra um, assistance that's available at the library, then the academics are absolutely open and willing and happy to talk to you about uh, the issues you may be having and to look at finding solutions. And there really is a lot of support. And you know, we do have uh, some students ask questions about, you know, what if I fail a subject? And uh, look, there's a lot of support. Unfortunately, that may happen on certain occasions, but I think I can honestly say for students who are putting in the effort and are seeking assistance early and having difficulty, students who fail, it's very far and few in between. Not too many students who are seeking this assistance will fail. There's lots and lots of assistance available. And the story I was just going to say to you was exactly for me. Um, I've never been overly strong uh, with maths or numbers. Okay. I did a marketing program as well, much like you, Rina. <laughs> um, but I found, interestingly enough, as Rita said, a lot of the subjects that you're required to do, whether it's accountancy, statistics, uh, economics, um, they'll build your skills. There's prerequisites. So you'll have the intro subjects and then if necessary in your program, you'll move on to next level. And there's lots of assistance there. So I ended up finding myself doing incredibly well in statistics and economics and subjects that I thought I wasn't uh, originally strong in. So I think with those sorts of things and the assistance there, um, don't be concerned about accountancy or other areas that you may not have done. Because I mean, you, as a student entering particularly a business degree, if you're doing a master's or an undergraduate program, you need to have a strong background, no matter what you're doing, whether it's marketing, human resource or anything, you're doing a commerce or a business degree, you need to have the foundations in all these key areas. So don't worry, we will be fine there. Um, then looking at, I guess, um, some of the questions coming through as well. I've uh, had someone talking about internships or full-time jobs in other parts of Australia other than Sydney. Do you want to comment on that at all, internships? Sydney is the biggest economy in this commercial centre of Australia. So a lot of companies, big companies that headquarter in Sydney, which means they, they obviously have the biggest size of employees, which means there are a lot more opportunities for students to find either part-time work or internship mm -hmm. in Sydney than in other states in Australia. Um, that's my, what that's what I found so far. If you can just go onto a simple job search website like seek.com.au and you look at any mm. random job in marketing or whatever it is, mm. you will find that the job listing in Sydney is the longest job listing compared mm. to other job listing in other states in Australia because of the sheer size of the economy here, that's what the number of companies available. And with Macquarie being in the biggest technology park in Sydney and in, in Australia in general, um, having access to those companies just nearby on the surround campus is really important for Macquarie students to get access to those opportunities when you are a student mm -hmm. here at Macquarie. Yes. I think being in the uh, business park, I think certainly mm -hmm. gives Macquarie and therefore our students a, a competitive mm -hmm. advantage with mm -hmm. internships and graduate positions. Kelly, you're going to make a comment on that? Yeah, I was just going to say um, there is possibility sometimes for different degrees to yep. go to um, different parts of rural New South Wales as yes. well. So if you're interested in that and maybe more volunteer work, mm -hmm. that is a possibility as well. But most of the internships will be here in Sydney. Fantastic. Uh, and then I've got another question I can see come up about a typical day. What does a typical day look like for a student? 
I think it depends. It depends. Um, every day is different. Every day is different. Um, yeah, so maybe I'd say like I normally get up in the morning, have breakfast, um, do some study in the morning, um, maybe go to class around 10 um, for a few hours um, and have lunch on campus, bring my lunch, whatever that may look like. Um, and then um, I sports generally at night. So I go to practice at night. Um, and then on different days, of course, I'll have work in the afternoon or in the morning, something like that. Mm-hmm. Are you um, sports Macquarie University, yeah. Sport and Aquatic Centre? Yes, yeah. I should just touch on what we mentioned there, that we do have, without doubt, the best sporting facility <laughs> in the Australian yeah, University. Really <laughs> it was actually built um, sometime ago, around the year 2000, for the Sydney Olympics. So we had mm-hmm. some of the Olympic teams uh, during the 2000 Olympics were actually mm-hmm. based at Macquarie University campus. Mm-hmm. So the facilities were essentially built around that. So they're actually absolutely first class. Mm-hmm. Rita, what uh, and was, I should say, in our work, what was a, a, a day in the life uh, of a student for you? It just depends on what day it was, <laughs> day <the> obviously. <laughs> um, but usually I would wake up in the morning, I would do some studies in the morning, I think I work in the morning as well, and I just go to class, which is for a few hours mm-hmm. per day, not all day ever. Um, and then I would go back to the library to do some more studies, or I'll go out with friends at night just across the streets to the shopping centre to see a yeah. movie or to get dinner quickly. So, and then I go back home and that's when I go to the gym. Uh, that fails sometimes. Um, then I go to sleep and that's it. It's, it's a, I, I rarely go anywhere else around campus because the campus has everything that yeah. pretty much needs for my student life. I think, that's that's perfect. I think we're very lucky. And when I do talk to students, I think that is something that I hear. Um, <laughs> For we some campuses, yeah, which is a great <laughs> thing. I think for some campuses, you know, you may uh, find universities um, who have more of a high rise or a CBD type campus location, yes. mm. where students will come to campus, they do their class, and they'll they'll basically go straight off, go home, yeah. or go into the city. So you don't build that social network. But Macquarie has absolutely everything on campus. It's a very large campus. Mm. There's spaces around. So what we find is students essentially come here. The class and they'll stay for the day instead of being having class and then disappearing, yeah. which I think really assists in one building uh, social networks, friends. obviously friends and, and also all that sort of thing. So it's, it's a fantastic place we can come and stay. Mm-hmm. I do hear that as well. Yeah. Uh, and then I see an important question coming through, which is a great one to touch on, is scholarships. Um, Macquarie University, we do have a very generous scholarship program. Um, it's many and varied and it really depends on what program you're going into or what uh, nationality you are in particular. Did you want to talk a little bit about some of the scholarships that we offer as well, or the experience there? I got a scholarship when I came to Macquarie that really helped me choose Macquarie as well, because it yeah. helped me reduce my um, tuition fee costs for my family when they make an investment for me to study overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, all of my friends have scholarship at Macquarie, and um, it, they can range from either country-based scholarships or merit-based scholarships, or even um, extra activity-based scholarship as well. So mm-hmm. if, you, if you have an, a conditional offer, make sure you meet the conditions as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you qualify for a full offer, you are eligible to either be um, automatically assessed for those scholarship or to apply for those scholarships. Mm-hmm. If you have a full offer, um, if you don't already have a scholarship attached to your offer letter, please feel free to go into our website and browse our scholarship programs available and apply for them as soon as possible as well. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, did you want to touch on that? Yeah, so definitely I agree with Rita. Um, those scholarships are a lot of help um, paying mm-hmm. the tuition fee. I got a scholarship as well. Um, and it really, every little bit helps when mm-hmm. um, you know, you're paying for your education. So I think it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. I think that's good advice. And there's, as I said, uh, we have a very generous scholarship program here at Macquarie, one of the most generous, if not the most generous in Australia. So there's too many to go into individual detail. Mm -hmm. So I would really encourage you to either make contact to see what scholarships you may be eligible for, or even easier, go onto our website. We have a great web page that really lists scholarships by nationality. So you can essentially put in your, your home nationality, uh, your citizenship, and you can actually see what scholarships would be available for you. Um, now, the next question I thought coming up there, I can see about summer programs for undergraduate students at Macquarie. Uh, and does summer program help to accelerate your degree program or the time of your degree? Yeah. Green, did you, did you touch on, or Kelly, Rita, any of the summer programs? <laughs> um, no? yeah, so yes. I'm actually doing, I'll be doing two summer units um, this year, so it definitely can. There are a limited number of classes you can take during the summer unit, so you'd have to check out and see if they fit into your degree. Um, but definitely it can help you graduate a bit earlier or, um, you know, take an extra class, anything like that. Um, I'll be actually finishing a semester early 
from taking some units. So, so, did you take advantage of that extra semester as well? I actually did. Actually, actually took an exchange unit during my <laughs> break. Fantastic. And travel overseas with Macquarie Mobility Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And that exchange unit I could bring back to credit back towards my degree. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me have a very amazing experience while traveling to Europe, but at the same time get credit for my degree. So definitely do a summer term if you're up for it and when you're at Macquarie, but make sure you explore things beyond the classroom, such as volunteering mm. overseas yeah. or go and exchange overseas as well, because those mm. really helped with getting unique experiences and coming your degree in a worthwhile way. Mm. I think that's a fantastic um, comment as well. And I think just to, to add to that, you know, Macquarie does have an amazing exchange uh, or outbound mobility uh, mm. program. So you may be a student coming from anywhere in the world. You obviously coming to Australia, then you can take advantage of our outbound mobility and our exchange partners. We have over 300 exchange partners around the world. So mm. you can basically take a semester or look at short term options to study mm. overseas and have another overseas experience uh, as well. Um, so I think we're coming uh, to the end of our, of our program. And I think just before we, uh, just to finish up, I'd like to thank the panel. Thank you so much for your thank comments. You. And I guess just to uh, reiterate the importance, if you need any more information on how to accept your offer, any more information on uh, how to meet the conditions, um, or basically, um, basically get your COE so you can apply for your visa, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're happy to assist in any way. Same goes, as I mentioned, for scholarships or any information at all. Accommodation, no matter what it may be, about study at Macquarie University, also studying in Sydney and in Australia. We're happy to help in any way we can. Uh, and we'd like to thank you again for um, choosing to uh, study at Macquarie University. And we look forward to welcoming you on campus. Uh, so we can't wait to see you here. And thank you.